Baba says, the unlimited father sits here and explains to you unlimited children. So the unlimited father sits here and explains to you unlimited children. There isn't anyone else who would say that he is explaining to the unlimited children. You children know that our unlimited father is the one who is called Shiv Baba. Now, we must understand that uh, for 2500 years, we have been body conscious and in this world of body consciousness, limited fathers, what does limited means? Pertaining to the body and unlimited means regarding the soul. So Baba says, when the limited fathers the physical fathers looked at us as physical entities okay or the physical teacher the teacher the soul who is body conscious looked at you as a in body consciousness you know as a as a physical student so what they how they looked at you what they taught you, what they thought about you was very different. But it is not the same here. So, you know, it's very interesting that although Baba's work, Baba's task is being carried out in a very ordinary setting, so, you know, it's a very mundane setting, it's, you know, uh, we are even using the latest, you know, technology and talking and using all methods to do seva. But everything, uh, you know, everything on the external is different, but it is the father, the unlimited father, the father of souls who has come to me the soul and is talking to me the soul and this has not happened in the whole cycle so this is very new now the thing is um, there are two things you can only understand something with the consciousness that you are in right so if I am body conscious, then understanding anything about the soul is very difficult because let's take one example. If you tell somebody who is very body conscious that you must get ever ready, like Baba says in the Murli, that you should be ever ready to leave. So whenever it's time to go, you should be all packed up and ready to leave then they would say, I don't mind where I go after this, I'm only interested in how I live here. <laughs> so that's a very body conscious approach to life. So Baba says that first thing is, I'm not talking to you the body conscious, you know, you the, you the body. I'm talking, I'm not talking to your physical identity or your social identity or your professional identity. These are identities that you have assumed here. I am talking to you, the soul. So if you want to listen to me, you have to sit in the awareness that I am a soul. And how do we sit in the awareness of the soul? So Baba is the one who again, you know, seats us into soul consciousness. So by every day listening to Baba, we become more and more soul conscious because you know when Baba talks, Baba is talking to the soul, Baba is looking at the soul. So you know his vision, his words, they all kind of emerge the soul consciousness in us. And then Baba says, 
I am the, I am talking to you, the soul. So first thing is, the more and more you listen to me, you start getting it that you are a soul. You are, you start becoming soul conscious. And then the second thing is, Baba says, I am the unlimited father. So I have come to give you the inheritance. But when you're soul conscious, and when you are obedient, because you realize that you are a soul and you realize that you need your inheritance, then you make the effort and I have come to give you that. So today Baba is very much underlining that you know you are a soul and I am your father. Now Baba today says that you and I are both travelers. And in Bhakti, there is a song in which they say, Dur desh ka rehne wala aay desh parai. So Baba says, why do you sing this song that the resident of the faraway land has come to this land which doesn't belong to him? Because this is the Karamshetra, this is the field of action, this is the stage where you and I don't belong actually, but you have come here for very and have been here for very long and now I have come here. Now, let's think about this. So, you know, when we undertake the course, we understand that, you know, I belong to the soul world. Have you got it in the course that, you know, the home of souls is the incorporeal world of light and absolute peace. And here it is a world of sound and so many things, vices, noise, everything. So Baba says that this is not your home, that is your home. Now uh, Baba says that when I come, I remember that this is not my home, but you have forgotten. So, Baba reminds us that this is not our home. Now, do you have any expectations where it's not your home? Do you have any expectations where it's not your home? You don't have any expectations. You understand that, you know, here you need to adjust and tolerate and accommodate. Yes, so have you seen people who uh, so when you go somewhere and you are a guest, how well behaved are you? <laughs> so you know, we are very well behaved when we are guests. So when you are a guest somewhere, you know that you have to adjust, that you have to compromise and even if you get something, you are very thankful. So you know, if somebody is considerate, you are very thankful that they are taking care of you. So Baba says that you are a guest here, this is not your home, you will not get the comfort, the peace that you are seeking here, can you? So Baba says everybody is looking for peace, but peace doesn't belong here. So this place where you have come for action, you, you don't, uh, you cannot have peace. So peace you are seeking because peace is something you had at home and you can only get it when you go home. But here you cannot have peace because peace is not what peace is not a quality of this Karamshetra. Now if you if you are expecting a bed in office, will they give you a bed in office? No. <laughs> when you are in office you need to do what you need to do in the office. Now, if somebody is very upset that, you know, I'm not being provided a bed in office, what do you do? You laugh at that person because his expectation is wrong. And then you give them the knowledge that, you know, you don't get a bed in office. In the office, you sit on a chair and work. And when you go home, then you sleep on a bed. Yes, because at home you are entitled to a bed. So Baba says similarly, this is not home. This is the field of action. This is office. Here you have to live like this. You know, you, 
you have the body the body will take rest recharge and then again set off to work you have to play your part here and baba says peace is when you go home peace you don't get here peace you will get in the soul world and baba says that if you the soul need some rest some time then what do you do with your buddhi you go home experience the peace recharge yourself take power from baba and come back and perform yes so uh, the thing is uh, we need uh, so baba says that here you have to act here you will have um, here you have to do karma and for that you need energy so the wise thing is energy of peace energy of happiness energy of knowledge everything you will need to play your part here so you baba is teaching us the method you know the method the mantra baba says the mantra i give you is man mana bhav so the mantra that baba gives is the mantra that the satguru is giving us the father is giving us teacher is giving us and man mana bhav means remember baba connect your mind to me and baba says when you remember me then i am the power house so i am the power house and i will give you three things when you remember me i will give you the power enough power for you to settle your old karmic accounts yes i will give you the power of knowledge i will give you the power of acceptance i will give you the power of tolerance i will give you the power of discernment i will give you every power to settle your karmic accounts i will also give you the power to understand so well and discern and decide so well that you don't create any new vikarma and i will also give you the strength and the power to create sukarma which is you know act virtuously in a manner so that you become a deity so baba says when you are on this stage and here i have come and i am talking to you the unlimited father is talking to you the biggest mantra that i am giving you is man mana bhav and this man mana bhav may sound like a little word but when you connect to me when you remember me i am giving you everything that you need i am giving you all the power that you need to settle your 63 births of karmic accounts i am giving you the power to understand that how you have to respond to everything in the moment so let me ask you one simple question have you uh, learned the art of responding from baba so baba has you know baba has shifting us from reaction to response baba has shifted us from the question why is this happening to what do i have to do here so have you felt that shift that earlier you know anything happened in the world and the question that popped up was why is this happening why is that happening why is the other happening it was always why 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 but now anything happens you just ask yourself one simple question how do i respond to this so what is the response that this situation or this thing is demanding from me and the other thing is you know when you are with baba and your old karmic accounts are settling then what happens is you know the unnecessary stuff that emerges in a situation is silent because you know um have you seen that if um, you know if uh, if you've kept a stack of you know you uh, things maybe dabbas in the kitchen and then one dabba falls and the other also fall with it 
so you know it's like that so when something in the present happens then everything in the past also starts acting with it reacting with it and it becomes a very big problem but if you have settled your you know if you've cleaned your inside through yoga power then anything in the present will not disturb you a lot you will not magnify the situation so you know when when something happens do you look at it as it is or do you look at it with all the trauma that you've been carrying so you know when something little happens so let's say there's a uh, there's a there's an accident maybe the leg got hurt or something happened and then are you just scared about what happened or are you scared about all that had happened in the past what's happened now and what can happen in the future so do you understand that we magnify the situation so much because there's so much of past vikarma which is not allowing me to see something for what it is you it becomes a very big problem because you know these sanskars of loss gain fame defamation you know uh, this sanskar of i like this i don't like this right wrong they kind of pull you into overthinking the thing and magnifying it too much so baba says when you remember me then i give you the strength to finish your karmic accounts clear your chit and when your chit is clear what happens is you see something for what it is not what your sanskars make you see but clearly you know what it is and you don't ask why you ask how do i respond to it and then the third thing that baba says is you know um, when you ask yourself in every antagonistic situation unfavorable situation you just ask how how do i respond to it and you respond to it by taking power from baba because of course there is a backlog and there are many things happening so you, it requires response but baba also says that i give you the strength which makes you become aware that i just don't have to get caught up in settling past accounts because obviously there is 63 births of karmic accounts it's not easy so there'll be lots of things that come up for settlement and of course you will settle it but don't uh, but be careful that your whole sangam yugi life is not just about settling karmic accounts in the face of all karmic accounts and in the face of you know responding to them accurately you also have to decide side by side about what you need to do in order to create a fortune because this sangam yog is also about creating our fortune for 21 births so baba says this one mantra of man mana bhav so baba says that i am talking to you unlimited children i am giving you the big picture the big picture is you are my children you are entitled to peace love happiness and a world of prosperity and everything and you had that you had that for two births why because you god's children you deserved it but then slowly ravan came and then you also got caught up in ravan and then as drama would have it you created vikarma this and that and now you're here and then baba says it's okay now you have to understand the secret of the cycle that the secret of the cycle and the secret that your father has come and you are in his sustenance now and baba says when you understand this and i am giving you the biggest mantra man mana bhav then if you remember me if you just keep remembering me and you uh, in the beginning you know baba says even if it 
even if you are not able to do it accurately no problem keep doing it keep remembering me and as you keep remembering me I will give you the strength to finish all your past karmic accounts I will give you the strength to respond appropriately in the face of every karmic account coming up because I have given you the knowledge that 63 births of karmic accounts are there so don't ask why why is very clear because there is a karmic settlement and when they happen how do you respond how do you respond without creating any vikarma so just ask yourself that and take power from me I will give you the touching and I will tell you if you if you are really on Srimad then Baba will give you solutions in many unique ways so you know even when um, uh, so if you understand and you are in acceptance of a situation and you are really thinking about how to respond to it how to resolve it then Baba gives you many touchings and Baba will give you a lot of help in arriving at the accurate thing to do so you know this there is this phrase Baba says yog yukt so yukti yukt so when you are in remembrance of Baba Baba will touch your buddhi and I am not only talking about touching your buddhi but Baba will even you know if you are missing something if you are not understanding something but if you are if your intention is very clear that I am not resisting anything because I understand where I am in my spiritual journey and I understand that my you know that I want to respond to everything appropriately if you are in that place then Baba will not only give you the touching but Baba will also give you you know if, you, if something is not able to enter your buddhi he will make you understand that from other people also other, uh, Baba will take many mouths Baba will speak through the murli Baba will speak through someone and he will give you the solution so this is the second thing when so when you are man manabhav Baba will give you uh, you know that that's that very fine line where you don't create vikarma and you do what needs to do all needs to be done also because there are two problems we usually face in the case when a karmic settlement comes up when the karmic settlement comes up you either start doing what you shouldn't do or you stop doing what you should do so there are two things now if you are caught up in maya of the why why kind then you will stop doing what you should do and if you are caught up in other vices you know like you are suffering from your own um, uh, own you know own problems own, vi own vices of revenge and complaint and this and that then maybe you will end up doing something which is a very big vikarma on your part so this man manabha will give you the strength to respond accurately and then the most important thing you will never lose sight that this is the only time that I have for creating the fortune for 21 births and not only 21 births but the whole cycle so Baba says you will have a absolutely immense clarity that this is the only time that I have for creating a fortune so you will not stop you will not stop your uh, whatever seva you are doing or whatever uh, dharana you are doing whatever you are working on virtues or you know your chart of yoga or you know understanding knowledge better and better every day you will not stop that you will not stop your attention on the four subjects in this godly school which is creating your fortune so Baba says I am talking to you unlimited children 
and I am giving you this mantra of Man Mana Bhav and you must understand the secret of the cycle. So you know in the cycle there was 21 births of Akarma and happiness but there have also been 63 births of Vikarma and you know creating sins and now it's a time of settlement but don't worry I am here with you. So you will settle and also create your fortune and then go back to your world of peace and happiness. And then Baba says, don't look for peace and happiness here, you won't find it. And then it is not the world which is giving you sorrow, it is your uh, foolish expectation. So Baba says, you need peace, you will get it when you go home. You need happiness, you will get it in the new world. This is not that world. This world is the world of sorrow. This time is the time for settlement. This time is not for seeking happiness, seeking, seeking peace. This time is for understanding where am I sitting, what do I have to do to move to that world of peace and happiness. And when you understand that, start doing that, then you will move to that world. And I remember um, day before yesterday's Murli, it was very beautiful when Baba said that uh, people say that they want to be thoughtless, but then uh, you, will, uh, you will feel the same uh, benefit, you know, when people say um, try to be thoughtless, what are they trying to say? They are trying to say that when you if you are able to achieve that state of thoughtlessness, then you will be absolutely calm and peaceful and undisturbed. But, ba but Baba says, in this world, in this Karamshetra, you cannot be thoughtless. But if you create thoughts only based on Srimat, then you, it is like being thoughtless, which means the same benefit, that same state of mind that people think will come from thoughtlessness, you will experience that state of mind. You will experience peace, you will experience stability, you will feel like you are very grounded, very centered, nothing is disturbing you. That kind of state which people aspire for will not come by being thoughtless but it will come when you take thoughts only based on Srimat. And Baba says, if in this world you need happiness, then happiness, it cannot be, you know, it's, it, this world is not a world of happiness. But if in this world you want to experience happiness, then the only method to do that is by doing good karma. Happiness is the product of good karma. And I tell you that, you know, when um, Bill Gates um, in, in, the, in, in experiences that Bill Gates shares, he tells that he earned a lot of money at a very young age. But then that money didn't give him happiness. But then he, in his journey, he figured out that he must use his money for some charitable work. And when he started doing that, he started experiencing happiness. So happiness is the product of good karma, whether you do it through body, through mind, through wealth. You may use any resource you have, but until and unless you use what you have for good karma. Now, Baba has given us a lot of clarity about what is good karma. So, Baba says, spiritual seva is the best karma because when the soul is empowered, then you don't need any other empowerment. The soul can fend for itself. You know, so Baba says that spiritual seva, when you do spiritual seva through body, mind, well, time, thought, whatever, that seva will give you happiness. So Baba says, in this old world, 
I am I have come I am teaching you I am giving you clarity about who you are who I am and then I am giving you clarity about the secrets of the cycle and I am giving you the mantra which will help you move from this world of peace, peacelessness to a world of peace and happiness but Baba says along with that I am also giving you the method to be peaceful and happy here also so peaceful and happy will not come by begging peace will come by creating thoughts based on Srimad and happiness will come by doing good karma so this is what Baba is saying and in the Murli today Baba says that I give you um, thousand steps of help but you have to take one step of courage and what is a so let's understand this very well Baba cannot give you help until you show courage now what is courage so first thing is courage should be limited to doing that which is based on Srimad because you know courage has a very bad reputation these days and mostly uh, people think that it is an act of courage to do something which is against um, Baba Srimad so they of course don't know Baba Srimad so they don't know God's laws so then they will say that you know doing something which is um, against the law of the land is courageous but Baba says no courageous means when you have the courage to do something that Baba is asking you to do so courage has to be limited to that now why do you need courage to do what Baba is asking you to do it's a very interesting thing because you know um, generally one would assume that it's okay Baba told me I'm doing it what's the big deal so why does this question of courage come up because you see that Maya is very powerful and Maya will so Baba is asking you to uh, read the Murli, um, do Murli Manthan, think about the Murli, churn the Murli and he is asking you to do yoga and he is asking you to pure and he is asking you to do seva but you know everything that you plan to do on Baba Srimad will be met by a lot of interference from Maya and even if you want to read the Murli every day Maya will uh, maybe you know in the middle Maya will say oh how boring I know this Murli I have read Murli so many times I know what Baba is saying and Maya will not even uh, allow you to listen to what Baba is saying today you know Maya will not even allow you to open your mind and heart and look at the Murli for what it is so Baba says you know in every step Gyan, Yog, Dharna, Seva there is a lot of resistance from Maya and in the face of that resistance you need courage because you know there will be many times when you just feel like giving up yes so not giving in not giving up is courage sometimes you will feel like giving in sometimes you will feel like giving up and not doing both is courage and so you know this determined thought that you take that no matter what I'm going to go on that's courage let me give you one example so yesterday there was this Mata and she was telling me that Didi you see every day when I wake up at Amrit Vela after that I have a really bad headache and after that bad headache I only get one thought that either 
I give up on Amrit Vela or you know um, or you know I keep sleeping all day which is not possible so I have work and this and that. So she said that every day I feel like there is a lot of problems coming because I am doing yoga and is it okay if I give up on the uh, you know on the thought that I have to get up and do yoga in the morning. I if, what if I just maintain that 6 o'clock is fine and every day I will get up at 6 and remember Baba. So I said no, this is where you need courage. So even if your whole body is telling you this is, this is not possible, you need courage. You need courage that this is Baba Srimat and it can't be wrong. So you need courage to follow Baba Srimat of yoga, purity, seva, everything. And then Baba says, if you show courage, I will come and help you. But do you show courage or do you keep saying that, you know, this is getting very difficult, very difficult. So Baba says, don't assume that uh, doing things on Srimat will be easy because Maya is here to test you and if you maintain your courage, if you maintain this determined thought that come what may, I am going to continue this, then and you don't lose heart, you don't lose faith, then I will come and help you. And fair enough, why should Baba help you earlier if you have not given the test? Is it not? Yes. And I remember Ramesh Paisab used to say something very nice. He used to say, you go and buy an earthen pot, ghada. Ghada karitte ho. So you just knock it, knock it, knock it. And you know, uh, you don't think that if I knock it, it can break. It's made of earthenware. You, you knock it and check it before you take it. And Baba says, I'm giving you the kingdom. Should I not knock and check you before I give you that? So... And Baba says, anyways, I don't knock and check. <laughs> Maya is doing that job. So at least I sit and watch how much courage you have, how much honesty you have, how much commitment you have. Okay, Om Shanti.